Hi, I am Jerome from Fastlane. Welcome to the series on Cisco Unify Wireless Networking Solution. Today I would like to show you how OTAP actually works. You probably heard about OTAP, that's over the air provisioning of access points, a feature by which an access point can discover its controller using its radio. As you probably know, the access points need to discover controllers before you can join them. Among all the uh, features that the access point is going to try to get information about controllers, one of them is over the air provisioning. So what is it and how does that actually work? It relies on a packet which is called RRM neighbor packet. This packet is sent by all access points as soon as they are connected to a controller. The feature of the RRM neighbor packet is not mainly to discover controllers through OTAP. Actually, by default, OTAP is disabled, which means that the RRM neighbor packets do not contain any OTAP information. It's disabled by default for security reasons. As you will see in a few seconds, the uh, OTAP information provides the IP address of your controller in the clear without any encryption. Think about it. When the access point boots, it tries to discover controllers, so it's not connected to anything yet. It doesn't have any tunnel to anything yet. It doesn't have any secure encryption with anything yet. So the only thing it can do is listen to the air, and if it gets information, this information has to be sent in the clear for the exponent to be able to read it. So the OTAP information that is sent in the RRM neighbor packets is sent in the clear. So what happens if you send it? Well. Anybody listening to the air, access points, or eavesdropper could read this information and get the IP address of your controller. From then, they can try to initiate an attack to your controllers. That's why OTAP is disabled by default. But if you enable it, if you enable this feature on your controller, then you tell all the access points connected to this controller, when you send the RRM neighbor packet, also send information about the controller itself. These RRM neighbor packets are usually used for radio resource management, as the name states. The access point sends these packets every 10 seconds by default at the lowest mandatory speed. And they use this feature to hear each other. From there, the controller is going to create groups saying AP1 and AP2 are hearing each other, so they are probably in the same wireless space. AP3 and AP4 are not hearing each other, so they are probably in two different wireless space. So as you can see, the RRM aim is mainly to create groups of uh, access points sharing the same wireless space and then manage this group by determining power and channels. So if you add the OTAP feature, you add the uh, control information to these RRM neighbor packets. Access points booting will be able to hear these messages and use it to uh, use the OTAP information within them to be able to find the controller. So OTAP is disabled by default. Here, is, as you can see on my controller, I turned OTAP on so that my access points connected to this controller would send this OTAP information off. This information is sent out of the radios, right? So that's not something you can see from the access point. If you were to connect to an access point I just put it, which is the case of this access point here, you would see a lot of things about the access point trying to discover network through the cable, but you would not see anything about OTAP, because OTAP is seen only on the wireless space. But if you were to capture traffic, like here, uh, over the air, from a wireless card, you might be able to get some OTAP information. That's what I have here. We have quite a few um, SSIDs being <coughs> forwarded here on this channel. But you can see here that my packet 2402 says LLC, you know, recognize the layer 2 um, uh, protocol. And SNAP tells you that this packet is probably something different from the others. There are a few things I would like you to see on this packet. First one, is this section here. Data rate 1 meg. The RRM neighbors packets are always sent at the lowest mandatory rate on which your access point is set. So my access point here is set on channel uh, 6. So if you configure your controller to um, have the lowest mandatory rates being different than 1 meg, then of course you would see another uh, speed being sent there. 
So this message is sent by the access point already connected to the controller, right? So how can you get the IP address of your controller from this information? Well, the first time you look at it, it might not be very intuitive. But once you've looked at two or three of them, it becomes pretty logical. The first thing you wanna, I want you to spot here is the destination address here. Cisco 0000000. 000 000 000 000 000. So that's the address which is used as a destination address for all the OTAP packets. All access points sending OTAP, well, are our m neighbor packets, but containing OTAP information, will send this message to this, IP, to this MAC address, 010B 085000000. So that's something you'll find in the body of the packet itself. And also a way to filter the packets and only get the RRM neighbor packet messages from your capture if you want to enable filter. So that's the, the first thing I want you to see. And then if you go to the data section here at the bottom, of course it's not very intuitive because it's an AWAP information. So this information doesn't contain very much a lot of things that you can decipher if you don't know what you're looking at. If you read Cisco documentation, they will tell you that this section contains a few information such as group identifier, you know, the access points are grouped in access points hearing each other, so the controller is creating virtual groups. It also contains information about the access point itself, an identifier of the access point, a key to encode and, and, and sign the fact that this packet is the real packet coming from an access point, um, information about the power level of the access point, the channel and things like that. But the one we're looking for here is actually the IP address of the controller. And the IP address of the controller here appears in this section which is highlighted here, the data section. And it's actually the section which says 0A, 01010A on line 040. 0A, 01010A is the IP address of my controller. Why is that? Well, my controller IP address, if I go back to it, and if I click on interfaces, is 10.1.1.10. Actually, you can see it in the, in the address itself here, 10.1.1.10. I'm connecting through the management interface. So that's in decimal. If you were to convert this value into hex, which is the value we see in the capture, you would get something like OA, 01, 01, OA. If you're not very comfortable with X, let me show you why. 10 in decimal converted to X is A. So as each byte has to be represented by two digits, you will see OA, 0A, to represent A. Of course, 1 is 1, so 1 would be 0, 1 to have two digits. And the final A would be uh, the final 10. So 10.1.1.10 here would be represented as 0A, 010100A. So how do you figure out which uh, digit here is representing the, uh, the IP address? Well, it's pretty easy. If you click on data and if you count bytes, count 10 and the 11th is the beginning of your IP address. So you see here on line 30001 b and so on, that's one digit, two, two, sorry, one byte, two bytes, three bytes, four bytes, five bytes, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And when I get to 10, I'm getting to 42. And the 11th byte is OA 01010A. So if you get to the data section, and if you count 10 bytes, the 11th byte will be your IP address. And as you can see, 0A 01010A, if you can read hex, and if you can convert 0A to 10 and 01 to 1, you can read the IP address in the clear. So that's what is being sent by your access point every 10 on second on average, but it depends also on the wireless condition, the air condition, and any device listening to this um, uh, flow on the same channel uh, could give, get this information. The access point is going also to use the other features to get to a controller, right? It's also going to use the uh, option 43 and the local uh, database of IP addresses and so on. But OTAP is one of them. Remember, uh, two things to keep in mind. It's disabled by default and it can be read in the clear. I hope this was useful for you. I would like to thank you for watching.